Thank you so much for coming for Shiji in the Asia session in RRC. We have a speaker, Yoichiro Miyake and Isamu Hasegawa from uh, Square Enix, and Benjamin Chang from Lay Vision, Azushi Wakimoto from GCAJ, Ken Anjo from OLM, and Roger Blanco uh, from Digital Idea from Korea. Hello, my name is Isam Hasegawa, is Yoichiro Miyake from Square Enix. Today, we are going to introduce you to our studio, Square Enix BD2. At first, let's introduce some of our actual projects. As an example of our pre-rendering technology, we have our own full-length movie, King's Grave Final Fantasy XV. And for our real-time work, we present to you the game Final Fantasy XV. Thank you. Thank you very much. So here is today's agenda. I will talk to you about four topics. First, I will talk about our multinational studio. Then, I will explain how our studio uses art and technology. Next, Miyagi-san will talk about AI technology at Square Enix. And finally, we will showcase some of our latest projects. First. Let me talk to you about our multinational studio. When you hear the name Square Enix, I think many of you have a very strong impression of a traditional Japanese company that develops JRPG like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. But I think uh, it is uh, more global than you think. Uh, while the majority of our staff is Japanese, we have many members who have come to work from overseas. Although some members cannot speak Japanese so well, we have our own translation team to provide support. So even though most of the Japanese staff, including me, is not so good at English, uh, but uh, we managed to get along okay. At the same time, at the same time, globalization is a goal that our studio is seriously considering. As you all know, Final Fantasy XV had a global simultaneous launch last year, and we have been actively communicating information about our project worldwide. Next, I would like to talk about art and technology. From the very beginning, our studio has always tried to ask, seek 
the optimal fusion、uh, art and technology. Over 100 artists work at our studio, from traditional concept artists to models and animators. At SeaGraph this year, our studio already gave a presentation about our achievements in concept arts. The talk session held yesterday was given by our art director, Tomohiro Hasegawa.、Uh, we are very pleased it, it went well. We also have an exhibition at the Production Art Gallery, so if you still haven't seen it, please take a look. The location is the Concourse OIA near the West Lobby. Today, Tomohiro will be waiting for you at, at the Production Gallery. Next, I would like to talk about CG technology. One of the main features of our studio is that we possess the both of pre rendering CG and real time CG technology. Since it is very rare for a single studio to be involved in the development of both, I think that our studio is very unique even on a worldwide scale. However, it's not like we just simply possess the two technologies. With pre rendering, for example, Our work has been selected for the SeaGraph 2016 Electronic Theater. And for real time, our work has been featured not just in SeaGraph 2016 Real Time Live, but at various talk sessions. At our VD2 studio, we fuse our two world class pre rendering CG and real time CG technologies in our work. For example, since we can share our CG asset both in both pre renders and real time formats, We are able to effectively improve the technologies of both through their mutual cooperation. At our studio, he also actively engaged in passing academic contributions as a way to both contribute to the industry and to improve our technologies. We will continue to provide academic contributions. At the same time, we will also keep on engaging in academic collaborations with the Tokyo University of the Arts. Now, I would like to pass the mic over to Miyake san, who will talk about our effort in AI. Miyake san, please. Okay,、uh, my name is Yoshio Miyake, working as、uh, AI lead in Square Enix.、Uh, we focus on not only CG, but also on AI technology.、Uh, we have been developing AI technology for this, these 10 years. I will introduce、uh, Final Fantasy XV's AI technologies. Uh, AI works、uh, as characters' brains,、uh, bodies, and monsters uh, uh, in, the, in complex environments.、Uh, I will show the AI tech movies.、Uh, all monsters and all bodies are controlled by AI technologies、uh, to make the, its decision making、uh, even in the complex situations. And the meta AI controls the game situation dynamically in the different game situations in anywhere. And navigation AI is find the path to the road, to the goals, and、uh, the conversation changes dynamically for different situations. And bodies、uh, have a conversation with the、uh, player characters always in different styles. And,、uh, Uh, and each character h a v e consciousness、uh, in the environment and、uh, the consciousness to the other the person.、Uh, this is the battles.、Uh, characters recognize the situations by itself and、uh, make its decisions. And this is a navigation mode. So any character s can find a path by using the navigation AIs. And、uh, in the conversation, a character's faces to a player's face and have the conversations. And there's、uh, many different characters and different AIs.、Uh, many AI technologies are implemented、uh, for different characters. And it's also for implemented for player characters.、Uh, player AIs assist the player's behaviors. Uh, even in、uh, complex situations, the complex battle.、Uh, so, so, many,、uh, so, but these functions,、uh, players can play easily、uh, complex games uh, uh, in, in modern RPG games. 
By using these AI technologies, we make uh, the best user experience for users. Okay. And uh, recent uh, AI technologies, uh, game AI, consists of three AIs, such as meta AI, character AIs, navigation AIs. Uh, meta AIs control the game situation dynamically. Uh, for example, in this situation, an octo the player is in crisis by defeat. So meta AI orders uh, uh, this character prompt to help the players. And next is the character AIs. Character AI has a hierarchical structure like this. Uh, in this, uh, for this character, uh, Nifl Soldier has uh, three layers. Top layer is state machines, next layer is BBS3, the last layer is state machine. By these three layers, uh, Nifl Soldier decides his its decisions uh, for the situation. Okay, that is demo. Uh, the green lit node uh, executed now uh, dynamically so for, for that situation. So it's thinking it changes uh, uh, again and again so, uh, dynamically. Okay, last is navigation AIs. Navigation AIs find the path uh, in the complex situations. Uh, this green tile is, is navigation mesh where the character are uh, allowed to move. By using navigation AIs, any character finds the path to uh, any uh, positions uh, in uh, any uh, uh, any game environment. Okay. Okay. Next. For the end of our presentation, we would like to show you some of our latest projects. First, I would like to show you our latest real-time rendering. This video clip shows our real-time renderer, but we use pre-rendering CG assets that we use in the uh, asset, uh, pre-rendering asset used in the movie King's Grave Final Fantasy XV. We can move the camera and change the next cycle since it is real-time rendering. This fall, we are also considering holding an art and tech conference. If anyone is interested, please let us know. We will also be participating in Sea Asia 2017 Bangkok, so I hope to see you in Thailand too. And finally, we, our studio is now seeking new staff members. If there is anyone who is interested in working at Square Enix BD2, please send us an email to this address. Uh, we prepared those business cards uh, about these emails. If you are interested in, uh, please take them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next presenter is Benjamin Chang. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ben Chang. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, film production in China. So maybe uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, some of the uh, introduce myself first. So um, those have been uh, I've been in North America working on some companies. These are my credits. Um, so I've seen my colleague there <laughs> from Square. So I was uh, we I was at the uh, Square Picture, Disney, DreamWorks, Sony Pictures pretty much uh, quite a, uh, in North America about 15 years. And I went to Asia, so I went to Taiwan and worked on some of the uh, TV series. And then I went to a uh, Renafan company called Revision, which is, uh, the brand name is uh, Fox Renafan. We did a lot of, uh, uh, render a lot of uh, credits. There's much more credits for the last three years compared to North America that I had. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna talk about a little bit about uh, box office in China. So it's very exciting. 
and uh, um, for the numbers, I don't know if you guys uh, seen any of the numbers for the recent uh, Chinese uh, box offices. So this is the recent box office in China. It's in billions. Uh, so from 2009 to 2016, and uh, almost average the growth for Chinese box office is about 35 percent every year. So it's a huge growth. And compared to the um, United States, the box office. So the growth in the, in the States is pretty, pretty constant. And uh, in China, it's huge growth for the uh, last uh, 10 years. And those are the, actually, those are the numbers. The growth is because of the screen numbers in China has been growing tremendously. So um, up to now, uh, 2016, end of 2017, and uh, the, the total screen number is about 40, about 41,000, more than 41,000, which surpass US box uh, uh, screens. And this is the uh, movie screens per million people. So every million people will have 29 uh, screens in China. And uh, every million people will have 130 screens in the States. So those are the facts, rec uh, the facts, uh, the numbers for uh, for the box office in China. So the in 2016, the total box office will be about 2.7 billion U.S. dollars, and then we have about 41,000 screens and uh, 1.3 billion viewer, and also it's about 3.73% um, increase from uh, 2015. So there are 722 domestic films and 92 imports in 2016. And the 84 of them are over 150 million in box office. So average ticket price is about $5. It's about, cheap, it's about cheaper in the US. And 2016, uh, The Fate of Furious made 392 million in China. And Transformers actually made 2,020 million in, in China alone. That's about almost twice as the US box office. Um, Dango is the, um, the Indian film, which made 191 million. And the international ticket sales are rose to about 61% since 2016, uh, at the first half. And the import film climbed 34%. So it's a huge hump. And the, the domestic, uh, one of the domestic films called Wolf Warrior 2 is reaching 100 million right now, only in five days. So those are the numbers. And the, right now, China is number two in box, uh, worldwide uh, box office. And uh, um, in the States, that's the thing, the fact that in the States, there's, uh, there are um, 7,800 people share one big screen. But in China, is 34,000 people share one big screen. So we still have, for, for China to reach the same number of people per screen, we had to have another 150,000 screens. So obviously in 2000, they estimated in 2020, which China will actually reach 50% of world growth for box office, worldwide sales. All right, so uh, more excitement. Those are for the full uh, box office, and there, there are more excitement in the animation industry. So for the 2016 records for animated feature, uh, it's a 62% increase from 2015. And the 65 animated feature film is total of uh, 1 billion USD box office. So 42 are domestic, which uh, about 34% of the total. And then 23 are imported, which made six, almost 700 million. And uh, Zootopia actually is uh, in China, the is a, one of the top box, box office for animated features, a 227 million box office. And the first um, single day or 24 million single day, the biggest for animation. So here are the uh, numbers compared throughout the years. So that you can see from 2013, the climb are huge, almost double every year for the box office, and especially for the, inter, uh, for the international releases. And these are the number of animated, fe uh, animated feature in China. And uh, that's um, 2016 actually is reaching uh, 42 imported film. Sorry, uh, 
42 domestic film and uh, 23 imported film. And those are the box office numbers for uh, the animated features. Only actually, I think one of them is domestic, or imported. And uh, one of them is from Japan. Actually, two of them are from Japan. OK, so now the tough part. So in China, the animation industry and the VFX industry are still very new, relatively new, compared to the US. So there's a lot of uh, um, problems right now that I'm listing. But um, doing, this is generic doing business in China. So um, everything is possible, but nothing is easy. And uh, um, patience is the key to success. And in Chinese culture, the answer yes is not actually a confirmation of we get the deal. <laughs> and uh, if, you, if they say you don't understand China, it means this is a disagreement. <laughs> and uh, um, provisional regulations means actually rules can change daily. Anything can change. So it's very tough. And uh, basically, um, when it says basically no problem, it means there are problems, are big problems. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> And signing contract means it's starting for the real negotiation. And uh, if you're optimistic, then think about number two. And if you're discouraged, think about number one. OK, so um, for Hollywood uh, VFX film, uh, a lot of films actually spend about half of the budget for visual effects. But in China, actually, right now, still the, the directors and producers, they are still, or the investors, they're still very, um, very, uh, they don't want to spend too much on visual effects, really, even if it's a visual effects film. And they want to spend more on the actors. And you can see, so for 100 million VFX heavy, uh, heavy film, they will spend 50 million in, the, in Hollywood, but they're only going to spend like 6 million for visual effects. So think about what you can do is for 6 million, really, not much you can do. And this is the current situation. So um, creating high quality visual effects film in China is very tough because um, the compressed budget for visual effects in exchange for famous actors, actress, because right now they are still very much into a big name actor, actress. And the directors the, and the producers, they expect Hollywood quality visual effects in fraction of visual effects you know, budget compared to Hollywood. And the, the actors and actresses, they don't understand how to act with virtual actor, really. I mean, they have no idea. They, 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 they will freeze when you tell them that there's a virtual animal in front of you. And uh, there's a the tight schedule because investors, they're looking for a quick turnaround. They don't want to spend longer time to get turnaround because they are coming from the different industry instead of uh, entertainment industry. And uh, the lack of uh, VFX planning, because producers and directors, they are inexperienced in CGI. Most of the directors and producers, they don't, they don't understand CGI. They don't know how to plan for it. And the directors, they, they use, they're, they're, they're used to the constant changes in the production. So let's say in the US, in Hollywood, we have previous, right? And we set everything. But then in, in Chinese production, nothing is constant, nothing is set. Even after, right after the end of the production, anything can change and they're used to it. And uh, uh, they are very uh, little experienced producers and VFX supervisors in China. <clears throat> and uh, VFX salary has been climbing record high because of lack of talent. Because in China, it's a relatively new industry. So um, currently, there are not much uh, talent right now. So all the companies are fighting for talents in China. And the audience been seeing Hollywood, you know, big budget VFX films, they're used to these, you know, the, 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 the quality. So they have a high expectation if you have a local domestic film. Okay, so uh, for high quality animated feature, it's even tougher because uh, markets are full of low budget, 10 million, less than 10 million animated feature for them. And the investment came from industry you know, they're looking for three years return for a new studio. And that would be really tough for a new studio. And uh, not enough time for story development, not enough time for, uh, not enough managed experience, not enough time for technology development, and uh, unexperienced distribution uh, management. 
and the animation Thailand salary doubled just two years ago. So let's say if you can do $100 in the States, you have to spend, used to be you can do it in $20, now you have to do it in $50, something like that. So audience has a, also has a high expectation of Hollywood studios. They've seen Disney, they've seen Dreamers, they want, you know, sub $10 million animated feature to be that quality. Okay, uh, some of the solution, but probably not solution, but recommendation. And uh, to the investors, so good art takes time, really. You can't expect anything, you know, a new studio to have something back in three years. There's no way. And uh, to producers and directors, so really do spend time on story development. And uh, hire experienced management team. Implement systems and pipelines. Educate through collaboration experiences. I think uh, for Western and Asia to collaborate together will be a good way to go because uh, we've got, US got an experience and China got their unique way, unique way of working. So we have to combine the experience together. And uh, higher budget, you know, for, for the, you know, for, and more, more money for the artists and more time for the artists to, to do better work. That's my just suggestion. And the uh, last words is um, try not learn VFX through YouTube. <laughs> really actually hire somebody to do high experts. Those are my uh, words. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next speaker is Atsushi Wakimoto uh, from DCAG, a Digital Content Association in Japan. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Atsushi Wakimoto, uh, General Manager of Cultural Project Division at Computer Graphic Arts Society, CG Arts, and also Director of Japan Media Festival Secretariat. This time, let me introduce our activities about education and promotion and cultural project. So our name, Computer Graphic Arts Society, has also Japanese name. The name in Japanese means Public Interest Incorporated Foundation for Image and Information and Educational Promotion Association. Image and Information for us means CZ, web, new media art, that is summarized in the word new culture. And this name indicates our two activities. The activities of our CG Arts are mainly divided in educational promotion and cultural project. For educational promotion, we publish textbooks, hold certification tests, and seminar and workshops. For cultural project, we conduct CZ contest for students we call Campus Genius Award, and hold Japan Media Arts Festival, and provide creative support. We made textbooks in the five categories as CG design, CG engineering, web design, image processing, and multimedia. Since 1992, we published one million copies for these 25 years for teachers and students who teach and learn such categories. And we hold certification tests twice a year in five subjects I mentioned above, with two levels, basic and expert. Every year we have about 15,000 examinees. The test is a paper test of selected format with 40 questions. And with 70% of correct answer ratio, examinees will pass the test. So among the five subjects, the test of CZ creator is 36% and it's the most popular in our test. 
to learn the latest technology, we hold seminars and workshops about game engine, VR, scenario writing, stereoscopic vision 3D, and making latest movie and game, and so on, throughout the year. From here, I introduce our cultural project. The CG contest for students is now established as a gateway to success in the digital field. Since its establishment in 1995, the contest has expanded its target areas along with the evolution of the creative environment. The contest was transformed into a new format in 2011, taking the word CZ with a wider understanding to include campus genius in response to the significant change of the relationship between viewer and creator, as well as the mechanism of the evolution of the works. The contest will continue to introduce new talent into society. And call for entry for 23rd edition has started from July 7th until October 10th this year. The contest has two divisions, as art division and entertainment division. We had about five hundred entries last year and 40 works were nominated in each division and at the awards one campus genius platinum four gold three silvers four bronze are awarded and then japan media arts festival is a comprehensive festival of media arts organized by the agency for cultural affairs government of japan and it honors outstanding works from a diverse range of media, from animation, comics, to media art and games. Last year, the 20th festival received about 4,000 entries from 88 countries and regions around the world. The festival gives awards in each, in each of its four divisions, art, entertainment, animation, and manga. It also provides a platform for appreciation of the award-winning and other notable works. And after such, after strict jury screening, every division selected the winners one grand prize, four excellence awards, and three new face awards in each division, as well as the winners of the special achievement awards. Those who have made ex exceptional contribution to the field of media arts. Since its inception in 1997, the festival has recognized significant works of high artistry and creativity. And in addition to the yearly exhibition of award-winning works has held other events such as symposiums, screenings, live performances, and showcases. So the 20th exhibition of award-winning works will be held from September 16th until 28th this year at NTT Intercommunication Center ICC, Tokyo Press Art Gallery, Toho Cinema Shinjuku and other locations mainly in Shinjuku area in Japan. And call for entries for 21st edition starts soon. I'm sorry, but uh, I cannot tell you exact date, but now it starts very, very soon. And we are also engaged in support creativities to foster a new culture. Residency program for overseas media at Creators Tokyo 2017 was commissioned by the Agency for Culture Affairs Government of Japan and offers creative support for new works for overseas media creators. This residency program provides an opportunity to create new work in Tokyo. The target field is media art, video, games, animation, and manga. The target age is from about 20 to 35 years old, but it's not indefinite. The deadline is September 19. The duration to stay in Tokyo is for 60 days from January 10th to March 10th next year. For more details, please visit our website. And we also have booths this time. So please take a brochure from CGR's booth at Silver Village in front of the real theater. Thank you so much.
to everyone. So the next speaker is Mr. Ken Anjo for the OLM Digital Japan.